<laughs> in your entrepreneurship journey, you might have to revolutionize industries and you might have to mess up the way the world is set up. You might have to, for example, have people trust you so that they can give you your money so that you keep it for them and they can only withdraw it after a certain period of time. And so how do you do this? How do you build the trust with the customers? How do you build the trust with your clientele so that they can trust you, pay you up front before you deliver a service or even before you deliver the products? Take a listen to what Strive has to say. It seems like every step of the way, building trustworthy partnerships were fundamental to your success. Whether it was gaining the trust of agents who enable mobile money to work, or the trust of the hundreds of young people who first spread the message of Econet during the early days. How did you get people to trust you? You know, I, th I think the key is by not being transactional in relationships. And, and, and it goes broader than just your relationship with customers. Uh, getting people to accept mobile money rather than mobile phones was the most counterintuitive thing we ever had to do. Because you, you're talking to people who, who don't have money, who have very little money, and they also had no bank accounts. So we had to persuade them that they could give us their money. In the case of Zimbabwe, they had faced 500,000% hyperinflation. They knew if you put money in the bank, the next day you didn't have it. And we had to launch mobile money during that time. So I used to say to my people, I said, when we're discussing how do you take mobile money across, how do we get people to accept this? I said, it's like trying to get people to drink. How did they do it at Coca-Cola? A black drink in a bottle, but they did it, right, to build this incredible company, Coca-Cola. I mean, that must have been the most difficult thing to get somebody to, that black stuff you drink. Well, we got people to open bank accounts, millions of them. And um, one of the ways we used to do it, which you're familiar, many of you, with what we call matatus, right, in Africa, the little combis. So we went to the universities and we hired the university students. Uh, and we wanted them to ride on matatus. So they'd ride two by two in matatus. And you know how noisy and lively African buses are, right? We talk to each other. And so get onto the bus and you start, they're supposed to strike a conversation about mobile money. I'm sending money to my cousin on the other side of town. The whole bus stops. <laughs> <laughs> and they talk. They get off the next bus stop. They get onto the next one. And they had to do this. And we had a calculation that said we needed them to talk to one and a half million people to get to our tipping point. There was no marketing. That was it. Those guys on the buses, talking and getting off the next one. And people didn't realize the same guys <laughs> <laughs> coming on the bus and having an argument about. Uh, and, and we also said uh, street uh, comedy, where they will, someone will say, you've stolen my money. Uh, and they start a, a mock fight in the middle of a township. And people will always gather when there's a fight, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they then explain that actually you can't steal my money because it's in my phone. And, and that got people to go out and register. And so these are just techniques that our people work on. Thank you guys for watching. Now, don't go yet if you haven't subscribed to our channel because this is just the tip of an iceberg. So what do you have to do now other than subscribing to our channel please comment on the video below and tell us if the, what Strive said really resonated with you, what you think of the opinion that he gave in this day, and anything else that you really like other entrepreneurs to hear, really, other cubs from across Africa. 
on what you think about our Lion Stripes advice. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Maro. Mm -hmm.